起我。<laughs> We should bring me Splash and everyone up here. They'd like it. A picnic. We could have a class picnic. Okay. Yeah. A look, a pretty butterfly. Wait, little butterfly. Show me where you live. <laughs> A long way. Why? Ugh! I see what you mean. Beefy. <gasps> Don't worry, he can't get out. I know, but he's still scary. A long way away from Beefy. A picnic, Millie and Molly. What's the occasion? Um, we don't have an occasion. The farm's a nice place. That's all. We thought everyone would like it. Yeah, yeah I, I love picnics. I love picnics. I have to write and be. I have to be taking my hand. I'm sure we will. I won't. Hi. Well, that's a shame, Humphrey. Perhaps you'd rather not go. I have lots of chores here you could do, like cleaning the blackboard, and there's all that rubbish what? he's tending to. No, no, and... no, I want to go now. Oh, good. Well, then, we'll go this Friday to celebrate the end of the week. What do you think? Yay! Yay! Millie and Molly had volunteered to cook up a surprise for the picnic. Well, let's see what else is in the recipe book. But deciding what to cook was trickier than they'd expected. Chocolate cake. But not everyone likes chocolate cake. Hmm, banana cake? I think bananas give Jack spots. Well, what does he like? I don't remember. We'd better find out. So Millie and Molly started to watch what their friends liked to eat. First, they looked for Jack. Got him, Jack. He's going for something. What? We've got a carrot. Carrot for Jack. Nothing. Ned likes apples. Apples. George likes oranges. That's because they match his hair. <laughs> By the end of the day, Millie and Molly were already having ideas about what they'd cook for some people in their class. Uh -huh. Jack. We'll have to get some carrots. Carrots. And Meg, she likes apples. Apple cake? Okay. Apples. And we can do an orange jelly for George. Orange jelly. We still have a lot of other people we don't know about. Like Sophie. Will we have enough time? The picnic's at the end of the week. I hope so. Everyone has to have something they like. So for the rest of the week, Millie and Molly watched their other school friends. And they watched. And they watched. Apricots. And they watched. Ice cream. Poppy will get the strawberry shortcake. And we can cook an apricot upside down cake for Elizabeth. She loves the smell of apricots. I'll get them out for you. Thanks, Mum. Are we cooking something for everyone now? We still haven't got anything for Sophie or Humphrey. We've only got tomorrow, because oh. the day after is picnic day. The next day, Millie and Molly watched Sophie extra carefully to see what food she liked. They watched her before school. Watch out! Didn't hurt. <laughs> they watched her during class. Oh. Oh. Huh? <laughs> and they watched her in the playground.
feel a rat, Sissy? He, he, he hurt me. But Sophie soon started to feel better once she'd eaten some of her chocolate, which gave Millie and Molly the clue they were looking for. Chocolate cake. That should be everyone. Oh, no. We still haven't got something for Humphrey. I don't think he should get anything. See what he did to Sophie today? He's always bullying people. Mum says we should be kind anyway. Well, maybe we shouldn't leave him out. But what can we make him? The picnic's tomorrow. I don't even know what he likes. As the afternoon wore on, Millie and Molly's problems got bigger. Not coming? But why, Sophie? It'll be fun. A picnic on the farm. Uh-uh. But why not? Humphrey, he'll just wreck it for me. He's always picking on me. But Miss Flash will be there. He always does things when she's not watching. Well, we'll stop him. Yeah. Can you really stop him? Of course. You've got to come. The picnic's for everyone. Besides, we made you a chocolate cake specially. A chocolate cake? <laughs> so Sophie decided she would come on the big picnic to the farm. But Millie and Molly made sure that Sophie sat as far away from Humphrey as possible. Do you like your chocolate cake, Sophie? <laughs> I love it. Hey, there's real pieces of carrot in this cake. <laughs> <laughs> I think Tom likes his blueberry muffins too. What a lovely picnic. Well done, Millie and Molly. Oh, look at the lamby. Come here, little one. Let me drop your lovely woolly coat. <laughs> Give me some of your cake, Sophie. <gasps> we made gingerbread men just for you, Humphrey. Don't like them. <sniffs> Smell funny. Smell this, Sophie. <clears throat> Let's play over there, Sophie. Let's play over there, Sophie. You're so lame, Molly. Just ignore him. Let's go. <clears throat> Despite Humphrey's bullying, the picnic was a huge success and everyone enjoyed exploring the farm. Oh no! Humphrey! <gasps> Where are you going? <sighs> What's he doing with Beefy? No, Humphrey! It's just a stupid cow, aren't you? Go on! Moo, moo! No! Beefy's dangerous! Get out of the paddy! Oh, Millie, no, come no, back! Humphrey, moo. get away from that bull! Come on, you dumb cow! Moo! Oh no, he's getting angry. Get out, Humphrey. He doesn't scare me, stupid bull. Please, Humphrey. He's going to charge. He'll hurt you. Really? Get out of there. Quick. Run, Humphrey, run. Ah, get up. I hurt my ankle. He's been Humphrey. for everyone, for saving me. Everyone loves gingerbread. They do? Yeah, everyone. You mean 
Would you not have to make something special for each person? I would have had a gingerbread. Yeah, me too. Yes. Yeah, sure. I love gingerbread. Me too. Everyone. <laughs> and while Humphrey didn't quite have the manners to say thank you himself, he never did bully Sophie or anyone else in their class again. Millie and Molly had never been brave enough to sleep the whole night in Farmer Hegarty's barn before. But something very special was going to happen. Molly, they're here! They're here! Come on, Molly, quick! <gasps> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven! Mrs. had seven puppies! Aren't they cute? That makes Scout a daddy. can't get a drink. Oh, poor little man. Good morning, all. Sleep well out here? Oh, I see we've had some luck. Oh, but Farmer Hegarty, the littlest one, can't get in to have a drink. No. Mm, that happens sometimes. Doesn't his mummy love him? It's not quite the same as us humans, Molly. It's nature's way. In the wild, the weakest babies are left out if there isn't enough food for a big litter like this. But can't you look after him? I don't have the time to look after every baby animal that can't look after itself. I've got a farm to run. But of course, if someone else... Oh, we'll do it! <laughs> Come on, little one. His eyes will open in a week or so and keep him warm. Lots of milk, lots of love. We will. Over the weeks that followed, Millie and Molly had fun looking after the friendly little puppy. But they did have trouble trying to find him a name. Let's call him Tiny. But what if he's big when he grows up? Oh. What about we name him after Farmer Hegarty? Here, Hegarty. Hegarty, Hegarty. Oh, oh, oh. Bad idea. <laughs> it wasn't long before the young pup was growing strong with all the care that Millie and Molly oh. were giving him. Here, puppy, puppy, puppy. We can't keep calling him Puppy. He needs a name. I can't decide. Well, he has a nice tail going there. Does that give you an idea? Wags? Wags. Wags? Come here, Wags. Come on, Wags. Wags, Wags, Wags. <laughs> Soon, Wags was old enough for Millie and Molly to teach him a trick. How to jump extra high. Okay. Fetch it, Wags. <laughs> Good, Good boy, Wags. Wags. Clever Wags. Good what a boy. clever dog. Good trick, young fella. Good boy. Good looking dog, too. Worth a bud, I reckon. Good fella. Come here. Good fella. Do you know those two people down there? No. Wags is making friends with them. Well, Wags needs to be careful. A bud stranger could make friends with him, and then we might never see him again. There's nothing wrong with being friendly, just with the right people. But Wags was always keen to make friends, even when he should have been doing other things. In behind! Round, Scout! Good boy, Scout! Your turn to try, Wags. Here's someone a little more your size. Come on, Wags, you've got a job to do like your dad. Get that lamb through the gate. Round, Wags. Come on, boy. Go on, Wags. Oh, look. He's making friends with that little lamby. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Mm. Well, that's all very nice, but that doesn't help me run my farm. What do you mean? He's good at catching frisbees. He can jump really, really high. I'm afraid that's no good to me, girls. This is a working farm. All the animals need to earn their keep. Even that little lamb will give me some wool one day. If an animal can't help me, I have to sell him. No! Sorry, but I can't afford a mouth that won't pay its own way. Well, he could come and live with me. Or me! You both have cats. Marmalade would never accept a dog in her house. And Molly... But Wags could be friendly and my tomcat would be friendly back. You live in an apartment, Molly. That's no place for a dog. Please. 
I suppose I can afford to hang on to him for a bit longer. At least till he's big enough to look after himself. You can come and play with him until then. How's that? Okay, thanks. Wags! But the next time Millie and Molly came to play with Wags, something terrible had happened. Wags! Here, boy! Wags! Come on, Wags! Come back to us, please! Wags! No, look! No. I've been right along the main road. No sign of Wags anywhere. Maybe he ran away. <laughs> now then, he knew you girls would be coming to play. I just hope he didn't get out and try to make friends with someone he shouldn't. But why would a stranger want to take him? He's the son of Scout, the best sheepdog around. That makes Wags very valuable. Who knows why bad people do anything? Come on, there's one other place we can try. But even as Millie and Molly kept looking, poor Wags was being bundled into the boot of a stranger's car. Wags! Wags! Come on, boys! Wags! Wags! I'm sorry, girls. If he was just lost, we would have found him by now. Hmm. Let's hope whoever took him looks after him as well as you did. But Wags wasn't being looked after well. He was stuck in a cage with a bigger dog. The kind of dog that Molly was always frightened of. But Millie and Molly didn't give up looking for Wags. And if anyone sees him, his name is Wags. And he's very, very friendly. And we miss him very much. So if you see him anywhere, please tell us. Hmm? But no one had seen where Wags had gone. And when the stranger realised that Wags was no use on his farm, he didn't even feed Wags properly. Oh, Marmalade, I hope little Wags is all right. Where are you, Wags? We just want to help you. But Millie and Molly did help Wags. One night when the strangers had gone to bed, Wags realised that his enclosure had been accidentally left unlocked. remembered the trick Millie and Molly had taught him. The next morning, Millie and Molly were in for two big surprises, but only one was a happy surprise. Still no sign of Wags. The other dogs have been drinking his water. Look! It's Wags! Be done, Scout. Oh, Wags, we missed you so much. And so did little Lammy. Where have you been, you naughty dog? Looks like the young fella is big enough to look after himself. You don't, oh, miss. We missed him so much. I know, I know. But he's a friendly dog, so the pet shop man will have no trouble finding him a nice home right in town. You'll get to visit him there. But what if he doesn't... What if Wags is sold to... To another country? Look, why don't you stay with him tonight, in the barn? If there is any way I can afford to keep him, I'll try to find it. But he's not a working dog. He's no good to me on the farm. All right. Thank you. Huh? Wags? What are you doing? What's 
happening? Where's Lammy? What? Where are you going? didn't try to make friends with them? Of course not. They were strangers. Looks like Wags is useful after all. If I didn't have a guard dog like Wags, I would have lost half my flock. Guess he's just <gasps> paid his way. You mean he can stay on the farm? Can he? I can't afford to let him go. Millie and Molly always loved visiting Grandpa and Granny Pig. Even though the old couple weren't Millie or Molly's actual grandparents, it was like they were. This oak tree was planted by Grandpa's parents just before he was born. It's so beautiful. That's nearly a hundred years ago. Wow, that's even older than my mum and dad. When you were born, did you live in a cave? <laughs> Not quite, but we didn't have cars to drive. We used horses, and there was no electricity either. Oh, that'll be the strawberry jam. I'll get this. I would to Mr. Limpy. And when I'm over at his place... See if he needs anything else. I'll have plenty of strawberry jam. <laughs> What are you two giggling about? We like the way you finish each other's sentences. <laughs> it's because we've been together for such a long time. Oh, I just did it again. <laughs> <laughs> and I know what you're going to say next. Oh, really? You're going to say, don't overdo it carrying the firewood. Hmm. I guess he does know what I'm going to say. Even if he's not going to take any notice. <laughs> <laughs> Millie and Molly helped Grandpa deliver the firewood. That lot should keep Mr. Limpy going for a bit. Grandpa, Molly's got a riddle. <laughs> oh, yes. What side of a cat has more hair? Hmm. I don't know, Molly. What side of a cat does have more hair? <laughs> the outside. <laughs> <laughs> Molly. <laughs> <laughs> they were all going to spend a fun afternoon together. Molly, it's time Grandpa was up from his nap. You can tell him another riddle, too. Grandpa, Grandpa, I've got a riddle. I've and what about you, Millie? Grandpa, Grandpa. Been on any adventures lately? Well, I'm thinking about going to a jungle. Peg, Granny Peg, Grandpa can't get out of bed. He didn't oh. even laugh at my riddle. Now, don't fuss. I'm just feeling a bit tired, that's all. I'll fuss if I like. Millie, Molly, I want you to run into town and fetch Dr. Smiley. Quick as you can now. Millie and Molly ran as fast as their legs would take them, all the way into town, to get Dr. Smiley. There's nothing to worry about, Granny Peg. Grandpa's just wearing out. It's time he went a bit slower. Now, let me finish up in here. I won't be long. Thank you, Doctor. Come on, girls. There's still plenty to do with my strawberry jam. You have to think about Granny Peg. She'll live to be a hundred, but... But I won't. How much longer have I got? You may not see another winter. Right. Thanks for telling me, Dr. Smiley. There are a few things I need to do. Well... Try to do them a bit slower. But of course, Grandpa wasn't going to do them a bit slower. So instead of arguing with him, Millie and Molly helped him stack the firewood. And the next day, bag all the potatoes. And the day after that, stack the pumpkins out of the weather. And finally, they picked all the strawberries from Grandpa's famous strawberry patch. Granny Pig's going to make lots of jam with these. That's the idea. Thanks for all your help. 
I've got a little something for you both. What is it? They're acorns. A seed of an oak tree like that one. If you plant them and look after them, they'll grow. Like you, into something quite beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, Grandpa. We'll look after them and help them grow. And think of you every time you look at them. <sighs> What's wrong, Grandpa? Nothing, Millie. Nothing at all. In fact, everything is fine. Everything is ready. Hello, Grandpa. When Millie and Molly turned up the next day, they found Granny Pig sitting under the oak tree, looking very sad. Granny Pig, what's wrong? Why are you crying? Oh, uh, Grandpa. Grandpa finally wore out last night. Oh! He left me this note. You can read it out, if, if you like. My dear Granny Pig, there are enough pumpkins, potatoes, and firewood to last you until, until you, you are 100. And there's enough strawberry jam for everybody. Please put me under the oak tree, and I will wait for you there. Love. Grandpa. Grandpa. Grandpa gave me an acorn to grow. It's going to be a great big oak and always remind me of Grandpa. I hope you don't mind this pot, little acorn. Will you help it grow, Grandpa? Now that Granny Peg was alone, Millie and Molly spent more time with her. They often sat together under the old oak to be close to Grandpa. And this photo is of us 75 years ago on our wedding day. You look beautiful and Grandpa's so handsome. Indeed he was. You might get married one day, Molly. What kind of a man would you like to marry? <laughs> well, he'd have to like riddles. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Millie? Oh, I don't think I'll get married. I'm going to have adventures and live at the South Pole. You could do both. And good morning, Granny Pig. Well, if it isn't Little John Odd Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I'm the town planner now. Well, John Odd Bottom, what can we do for you? I'm here to inform you that under local bylaw 266A, this land and all holdings will be resumed under the Act to facilitate the construction of a new thoroughfare. What did he say? I think they want to build a road. A highway, directly through here, all the way to town. But the tree's in the way. Hmm. Under Ordinance 2945 of the Tree Removal Act, subsection 11B, the tree will be cut down. Oh! No! But Grandpa's here. He's waiting for me under this beautiful old tree. Oh, I'm sorry, but the government and the council have elected to exercise their authority in this matter and it would be a contravention of my duty not to enforce the order. I beg your pardon? He says they have to cut down the tree to make way for the highway. <laughs> Wait! Don't you like trees, Mr Oddbottom? Oh, I love all herbaceous and woody perennial life. And I climbed this very quirpus robor when I was just a little older than you. He did? But uh, we require a new highway into town. Good day to you all. Millie and Molly tried not to think about what was going to happen to the oak tree. Instead, they tried to think about Granny Pig's 100th birthday. Do you think she'll like this yellow paper? Of course. Everyone likes yellow. When the day came, Granny Pig didn't want a big party. She was just happy to have a quiet afternoon with Millie and Molly. Here's some of my special pumpkin scones. Oh, my favourite! I made them with the last of the pumpkins Grandpa grew. You can put some strawberry jam on them if you like. Yes, please. Oh, is that all the jam that's left? Yes, but, but you can use it. Just don't eat too much because I'm making mashed potatoes with dinner and that'll be the end of them too. The potatoes Grandpa grew? They've lasted a long time, haven't they? 
We've bought you something, Granny Peg. Happy 100th birthday. For me? Well, this is a nice surprise. Oh, it's lovely. It's a picture of Molly and me with Grandpa. I mixed up a riddle and we laughed really hard. <laughs> Thank you so very much, girls. It's the best present I've ever had. After Millie and Molly went home, a happy but tired Granny Pig put the very last log on the fire and climbed into the nice warm bed she used to share with Grandpa. That night, Granny Pig began her journey to be with Grandpa once again. My acorn's growing. Mine too. One each for Grandpa and Granny Pig. Hey, Grandpa and Granny Peg both had long and happy lives. And now they'll be together forever under the old oak tree. But later that week, Millie and Molly saw the town planner driving towards Grandpa and Granny Peg's house, followed by big road building machines. They're going to cut down the oak tree. We've got to stop them. Please, please, leave Grandpa and Granny Peg alone. You can't cut down that tree. Please. I've discovered a little-known subsection of the town planning and thoroughfare bylaws. <clears throat> the officer supervising a project may show discretion when an object of value or significance is involved. Does that mean you're going to cut down the tree? No. It means that I can make them build the road around the tree. The tree stays and so do Grandpa and Granny Pig. Together. Yeah! And whenever people travel to Millie and Molly's town, they always wonder why the road kinks around the grand old oak tree. Millie and Molly know why. <laughs> Millie and Molly had brought their cats to school because Miss Blythe had asked them to. Marmalade is my cat, and I love her, even though sometimes she can be naughty. <laughs> Thank you, Millie. And what about your pussycat, Molly? Well, this is Tomcat, and he's a boy cat. And he's best friends with Millie's cat, Marmalade. Oh, and he likes yellow, like Millie and me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Molly. Who wants to bring in their pet tomorrow? Fine! Poppy and Alf, we look forward to seeing your pets tomorrow. Now, I hope you're all getting your pets in shape for pet day. It's two weeks away. Yes, yes Miss Blythe! There'll be a couple of mystery prizes, and one for the most obedient pet in the whole class. Stay there, Marmalade. Millie and Molly were sure that Marmalade and Tomcat knew how to be obedient. Marmalade first. Marmalade, come here. Come on, Marmalade. Marmalade. Oh, come on, Marmalade. Tomcat will do it. Tomcat! Tomcat! Here, puss, puss, puss! Ah! 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 Mm. This could take forever. This is Torty. He's a long-necked tortoise who likes eating insects and worms. This isn't my dog. He's a stray, but I look after him when he comes to visit our caravan. We call him Puddles, because sometimes he makes mistakes and has to go outside. Oh, dear. <laughs> I think it's time he went outside. <laughs> Come on, Puddles. Miss Blythe? Yes, Harry? Do I have to have a pet to come to pet day? Of course not. I'm sure you'll have fun enjoying other people's pets. Mm, no. Millie and Molly felt sorry that Harry didn't have a pet, but they had their own problems to solve for pet day. Obedience problems. Get back! Get back! Good dog, Scout! Get around! Scout's so obedient, Farmer Higgity. He is. Tomcat could never do that. Mummily neither. Can I try calling Scout? Sure, call him. Scout! Scout! Come here, boy. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> if you like, you can take him to Pet A instead of Marmalade. Scout will win for sure. Oh, I couldn't do that. Marmalade's my pet. I just have to get her to do what Scout does. Well, the best trick is to feed Marmalade and Tomcat when you call. 
If they think they're going to get fed, they'll be very obedient and come every time you call. This is Zoldan. He protects my house. I have to talk to him in Martian. Ziggity doa, Zoldan. Ooh. I told him dinosaurs from outer space are coming to eat my bedroom. Wow. wow. This is Roger the goat. He eats anything. One day he even ate my homework. I remember that, Jack. I also remember not quite believing you. Oh, he's eating my spare. Roger put down my spelling book. Sorry, Miss Blythe. What's wrong, Harry? I wish I could have a pet that could eat my homework. Mama Haggerty has lots of animals. Maybe he could lend you one. They're all too big. I live in a flat. Me too. You could have a cat like me. I can't. Mum's allergic. Oh, oh dear. Well, it looks like no spelling today. Fortunately, he hasn't eaten the arithmetic book. Aww. That afternoon, Millie tried Farmer Hegarty's obedience trick with the food. Marmalade? Marmalade! What a good cat you are! Are you going to win the prize for the most obedient pet? I think you are. Molly tried too, with the same success. Come on, Tom Cat! Look what I've got! Nice, tasty, fishy treats for a good pussy cat! <laughs> Good boy. This is Mr. Cottonbottom. <laughs> <laughs> he likes lettuce and carrots and leaves little jelly beans everywhere. <laughs> well, my pet's too big to bring into the classroom. So he's looking through the window. <laughs> oh, well, bless my Scottish soul. <laughs> Millie tried hard to think of a pet that Harry could have. Marmalade! Come on, Marmalade! But when Marmalade stopped being obedient... I've got your favourite dinner! Millie couldn't Marmalade. worry about Harry, too. Marmalade! Come here, Marmalade! Oh, Marmalade! But Molly had a thought. A budgie would be just the pet for Harry. Oh, sorry, Molly. I've just sold the last one. Was poor Harry ever going to get a pet of his own? What is it, Marmalade? What's down there? Marmalade! Now I know why you were being naughty this afternoon. There was a mouse in the house. Good pussycat. Now, what'll I do with this mouse? This is Stinky the skunk. Oh. He's called Stinky because he can spray his stink a really long way. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, George. I think perhaps he should go outside. Don't worry. He only sprays when he gets a fright. Well, thank you, George. Is there anyone else with a pet today? Me, Miss Blythe. Me. I got a pet. Wonderful, Harry. Millie gave it to me. It's a mouse. His name is Brian. Oh, oh no. I'm allergic. <laughs> When pet day arrived, Millie and Molly were still hopeful that Marmalade or Tomcat would be more obedient than all the other pets and might win the prize for most obedient pet. <laughs> right then. Thank you, everyone. What a lovely group of pets we have today. But not everyone can win, so here are the prizes. The prize for the smallest pet goes to Joe for his hermit crab. Yay! Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The prize for the biggest pet goes to Chloe for her wonderful horse. Oh, well, oh, yeah. Chloe. Oh, yeah. 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 Congratulations, Chloe! <laughs> And the prize for most unusual pet goes to George for Stinky the Skunk. Oh, yeah. What about my dog? He speaks Martian. That's unusual. Humphrey, you have to admit, Stinky is very unusual. He should get the prize for the stinkiest pet. Mum says she can still smell it. <laughs> now, the final prize for the most obedient pet. I'd like you all to put your pets on the rope over here. 
Good luck with Mom tonight, Mimi. Thanks, Molly. Good luck with Tomcat. Now hurry along, everyone. Remember, your name is Brian. Don't forget to come out when I call you. Moldan, Ziba the Nasta Jela. All right. All the pet owners, back to your start positions. And then we'll start. Now quiet, everyone. Ready? Call your pets! Mama! 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 Almost everyone's animal was being obedient. Except Harry's mouse, Brian, who hadn't even come out of his box. Please, Brian, please come out. She's a good mouser. I don't want a new pet. I want Brian. There he is. That Brian. 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 It's tickling. Well, I declare Harry and Brian the winners. Yay! Um, I can't come too close. I'm allergic to mice, you know. Hooray! Toti came second. Oh, yeah. I can't help it. Stupid skunk. Now even Zoldan won't come near me. Zoldan! Zena Zenaban! Come back, you stupid dog from out of space! For the rest of the afternoon, everyone went about collecting their pets. <laughs> and that night, the two best friends decided that their cats were very special, even if they weren't always obedient. I never trade Marmalade in for Scout or any other pet. Me neither, especially not a skunk. <laughs> because they were visiting a new friend, Maxter. He'd just moved to town from the city, and he had something special. Hello, I'm Millie, and this is Molly. Well, well, well. Pass it, pass it to him. Oh, We've come to play with Maxter and see his giant television set. You'd best come in then. Go, go, go. You've got guests. Hi. Did you see that? They scored a goal. Yes, it was very interesting. Millie and Molly have come to play with you, Maxter. They can watch the TV with me. Oh, gee, thanks, Maxter. We've never seen a television this big before. Yes, run! Go! Woohoo! Is it true you've got 20 channels? 45. Oh. But it never seems to get off this channel. It only has soccer. We don't mind. Great kick! Shoot! 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 Oh, great pass! Hit the right kick in the hair! Go! Go! Do you ever watch anything else? No. Not even cartoons? Are there any about soccer? 
I don't think so. He's offside! You can't do that! Well, thank you very much for letting us watch your big television. We might go outside now. Okay, bye. Wouldn't you like to come out and play too? Outside? Why? And he never plays outside. He's always inside. Really? No fresh air? No exercise? I thought you said Max delights soccer. He does, but he never plays it, only watches it on TV. On the biggest oh. TV in the whole wide world. That's big. He lived in the city and didn't have a park or anything. Well, he does now. Maybe he needs to learn to play outside. Ah! Marmalade must be hungry. It's delicious flesh. Mum? Dad? Yes, Millie? You want to know how to teach Maxter to play outside? Invite him to the park. Hmm. Okay. But can we get a television as big as the one Maxter has? Of course. Really? As soon as you've finished school and high school and university and get a job so you can pay for it. Dad! This ferocious killing machine with its three rows of razor sharp... <laughs> So Millie and Molly invited Maxter to the park. Not too high. They played on the swings and waited for Maxter. <laughs> they played on the roundabout, but still no Maxter. <laughs> they played on the slippery dip. <laughs> but still there was no sign of Maxter. So finally Millie and Molly went to find out if something was wrong. His foot was miles over the line! Ah! Well, well, well. You said you'd go to the park, and here you are, stuck in front of the TV. It's going off. No! Wait, please! Can we watch cartoons? No television. Please? Outside, you can play in the backyard with your new friends. Get some fresh air and exercise. It'll be fun! Hmm. But no sooner had they all gone outside, the Maxter had other plans. Not television again! Shh! My mother will hear! Well, well, well! Um, hi, Mom. Outside, but now! But no matter what Maxter's mother said, Maxter always found a way to watch television. Maxter! Hi. This old TV used to belong to my gran, but luckily it still works. I kept it for emergencies. Go! A go! Millie and Molly wondered if Maxter would ever stop watching television. By the time the weekend came, Millie and Molly had a plan. They were going to tempt Baxter outside. No! Kick it to the other man! Oh, this way! Around the back, Molly! Coming! Coming! It's heavy! Oh, that shouldn't be a gun! Maxter had to choose. Television or find out what those girls were up to. It's going to be so much fun! Yeah! And then we can paint! What are you doing? Oh, we thought you were watching television. I... I was. Um, but all your noise. What are you doing? Can you guess? No, can you just tell me? I want to go and watch the telly. <laughs> no, we can't tell you. You have to guess. I don't know.
Please just tell me. All this stuff. Wait a minute, all these things. Wood, nails, bucket, rope, boxes. I don't know. We're building something. Building what? <laughs> something up high. An airplane? <laughs> it has something to do with the tree. Have another guess. We're building something and it goes in the tree. And we can all play in it. You, you mean a tree shack? Tree hut! I've never seen a real tree hut before. Only on television. If you help us, you'll have your very own. Really? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. For the rest of the day, Millie, Molly and Maxter worked hard to build their tree hut. And Maxter didn't once think about watching television. Well, well, well. Hey, Mum, look what we made without any help or anything, all by ourselves. This is our tree hut. And these are our curtains. And we even have a lift. Yeah, isn't it great? It's magnificent. Well done. But it's time to get down now. Millie and Molly have to go home. But the tree hut was the beginning of a new problem with Maxter. I'm staying up here for dinner. Can you bring me my soccer magazines? Please, Mum? Maxter stayed in the tree hut for the rest of the afternoon. Maxter stayed in the tree hut for dinner. Maxter stayed in the tree hut to sleep. Maxter stayed in the tree hut even when it rained. After a couple of days, Millie and Molly were beginning to wonder whether building the tree hut was a good idea after all. At least Maxter's getting lots of fresh air. But no running around. He really likes being up in that tree hut. Yeah, the same as he really likes watching television. When he does something, he really does it. There has to be a way to get him down. Look out! Sorry. That's all right, Jack. I've just had an idea. Aren't those soccer posts just behind Maxter's house? Yes. You can see the tree hut. So, thanks. Jack, will you and Tom do us a favour? Hi, Maxter. We've come to look at the view. Yeah. View? It's just a house. But what about our... You could play soccer instead of reading about it or watching on a TV. Jack and Tom are in a team. You could join. Here I come again. Oh, great kick. Actually play? Mum, Mum, Mum! I want to play soccer. There's a team and everything. Can you sign me up, please? Well, well, well. Come Look, on, there's kids of all the men still. Oh, it's nice, nice. Oh, oh, Maxter had won Man of the Match. Well done, Maxter. You were great. I've decided on television. Mm. Oh, no. We thought you gave up watching television. I did, and I'm going to practice soccer so much that I'll be a soccer star. I'll be on TV instead of watching it. <laughs> well, well, well. Millie and Molly knew that Maxter probably would be a soccer star because when he did something, he really did it. Ah! 